you know, what, so how do you play something like that when premiums are high, but you know, you're expecting some, some movement. How do, how do you, how do you attack that? So I usually like, you know, my style is kind of a, like a pair style. I like doing vol yeah. mix and I like doing a spy, like, you know, on the spy master type trades. Um, yeah. So what I do is I just, I'm looking forward. So we have a CPI number on the 12th. So a lot of my trading is just based on, you know, time and, and interval. Um, so, but my intervals are just longer. So we're looking past the CPI number and, you know, if the market likes the number, we'll probably rally a little bit, but almost for sure, vol will come down, VIX will drop. So when you look at it, um, all right, so I want a short volatility post the 12th. So I want to buy VIX puts that are going to expire after uh, January 12th. Simple. Okay. But in the meantime, we're going to chop around a little bit. So um, maybe buying a couple of short-term uh, put flies in the SPY, let's say. So you have, you're short the market, but you're short vol at the same time. So as if we get a little downdraft in the market, you just close the SPY put fly. Again, not really looking hard about a market direction, but enough that you just close your downside trade in the SPY and you generate some bucks out of that. And that will end up giving you a, a VIX put for almost nothing or maybe even a credit. And then you see what happens after the CPI number. So, you know, if it ends up being okay, you get kind of a two bagger. You made a little money on the short spy because we do still have some vol, not a lot, but some. Mm -hmm. And then you make money on the VIX put after, you know, after, after the CPI. Well, number. And, to your, to your, and to your point, VIX is expensive, but the actual option premiums on VIX are not. So right. that is a nice little trade, uh, trading VIX options right here.